the main points of today's agenda was how to eradicate terrorism by exploring different possibilities and ways of cooperation in full respect of fundamental rights. Taking hate speech is an important element to counter extremism and intolerance. In the online world, we have been trying to identify how extremist groups incite to violence and hatred against people based solely on their ethnicity, religion, gender, and sexual orientation. In that context, the effective enforcement of the framework decision on racism and xenophobia is a priority for the Commission. In parallel, the Commission will propose to extend the list of EU crimes in the EU treaty to all forms of hate crime and hate speech. This is a priority for us, as underlined by the President in a State of Union speech. Another track of work related to the quick reaction of the IT platforms. We make sure that they remove more illegal hate speech and prevent it from going viral. Our work with the IT industry under the Code of Conduct on countering illegal hate speech online has been very successful and will continue. But uh, with the Digital Service Acts, we want also to look into the platform's liability and set out a comprehensive approach towards all forms of illegal content online. And also related to the topic of countering terrorism, I would like to welcome the presidency report on the state of play regarding support for victims of terrorism, particularly in cross-border situations. This is um, relevant in view of these recent, again, terrorist attacks. I appreciate the work and dedication of the German presidency towards uh, the setting up of single contact points for victims of terrorism. This will ensure the optimal cooperation and coordination of victim support services, both within a member state and between member states. And we have uh, launched a new victim strategy for all the victims of all crimes, but of course, we continue to have a specific attention to the victims of terrorism. And it was said by uh, the Minister of Justice of Germany, during today's meeting, I was, uh, we also welcome the Council conclusions on the open arrest warrant. I want just to say that uh, the Commission's commitment is very clear to continue a, a close monitoring for a full transposition of the framework decision on this justice cooperation instrument in all the member states. It's very important and we have seen that also during the pandemic. We have had some discussions on this. But of course I want to say some words about the discussion uh, in relation with the rule of law. Uh, the Commission have published the first annual report on the rule of law at the end of September, and today it was the first discussion in the Justice Council. Of course, we have had in the past two months other kind of discussions in the Geneva Council. On the 13th of October, it was possible to have a discussion on the horizontal developments uh, in all the member states. And on the 17th of November, we have had a first country-specific discussions about the situation in five member states. But it's very important to continue with the next presidency to do the same, but it was very important to start today a discussion in the Justice Council, because the first chapter of the Rule of Law Report is dedicated to the uh, justice system, independence, uh, quality, eff effective, uh, effectiveness of the justice system, and it's very important to maybe in the next uh, months to continue such a kind of discussions uh, on the base of the annual Rule of Law Report to see in some concrete aspects of the justice system what are the best practices, what are the possible improvements. And one of the most important improvements maybe in the justice system that we have seen also more and more during the pandemic is the necessity to invest in digital tools. And of course, it's very urgent. We have different kind of situation in the member states about that. But in the light of uh, the last developments during the pandemic, uh, we have decided at the Commission level to uh, go forward. And the Commission has today adopted a communication on the digitalization of justice in the European Union. Our objective is clear. We need a clear strategy to ensure justice is also moving forward into the Europe's digital decade. We are proposing a new digital justice toolbox. It includes a comprehensive framework of legislative, financial, and IT actions to support these digital transitions. Among other others, 
we are now putting forward a legislative proposal for 2021 to make the EU cross-border civil and criminal judicial cooperation instruments digital by default. The existing IT tools we developed over the past decade are a good stepping stone for our future tools. In addition to this communication, the Commission has also adopted a legislative proposal on an IT tool for cross-border cooperation, e-codex. This is the main tool for secure cross-border cooperation in civil, commercial and criminal law proceedings. And we will transfer the operational power of this system to the agency EU LISA as of 1st July 2023. And today, the Commission is also presenting an in-depth fact-finding mapping which looks into the level of digitalization of justice throughout the uh, European Union. Based of, on this significant work, we were able to establish a good baseline where the member states stand with regard to the digitalization of justice. And we now call on uh, the all member states to follow up adequately at their level two so they can speed up the digital transition of the justice systems at home. And I want just to insist on another point because you know that uh, uh, we uh, will have maybe the opportunity from the beginning of next year uh, to um, uh, spend a lot of money in the framework of the MFF and the next generation EU. But if we are doing that, it will be very important to put into place the European Public Prosecutor's Office and to start the operation of the European Public Prosecutor's Office. And uh, I've made a state of play uh, for the Minister of Justice about the situation. Progress has been made since the last Council in October. Some member states have nominated their European delegate prosecutors. We will start working on the 15th of January to test the different processes in the uh, European Public Prosecutor Office. But I urge all other member states to speed up their nomination in order to be able to start uh, on 1st March 2021 with the operational activities. We cannot allow any further delays, especially in light of the forthcoming multiannual financial framework and the next generation AU, I said at the beginning. And it's very important to insist on this because uh, there are a lot of things to do in the member states about the implementing measures of the regulation on the APPO and about the selection process and the appointment of the delegate prosecutors. But I don't want to conclude uh, without one word to say that it was very efficient to work during such a very difficult period with the German presidency. I want to congratulate Christine uh, about the, the way that it was possible to manage the presidency during the pandemic, and we have had very good results. And now we try to continue, of course, with the next uh, presidency, the Portuguese presidency. But of course, when I'm say saying that we have had good results, I want to confirm that Germany is ready to start with the PPO from the 15th of uh, January, because the delegate prosecutor, prosecutors are appointed. So it must be possible for all the other member states to do the same in the near future, and I'm hoping that it will be the case. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Commissioner.